Okay, so I know that the voltage is 9 volts, and we have two resistors. Um, we could wire them up in series or in parallel. So um, we want to do the one that's going to give us the most current. So I is V over R, but the resistance here is 2R. Um, I equals V over R, but the resistance here would be 1 over resistance equivalent is 1 over R plus 1 over R, which would be the same as 2 over R. So R EQ is going to be R over 2. Um, R over 2. Okay, so which is going to give us greater current dividing by this one's going to be dividing by 2, and this is going to be multiplying by 2. So this is going to give us greater current. And so um, I equals 2V over R. And we know that V is 9 and R is 1050. Now, if I just make one loop... Um, so basically, I have my voltage. Then I have my resistors in parallel. Resistors there. And then I just make one loop. Um, then the magnetic field would be N mu zero I over to R one mu zero I, and we already know that I is going to be 2V over R. Okay. N mu zero I over 2R. So let's think about what R would be. Um, our length of wire is 2 meters. Circumference would be the length of the wire is 2 pi r. So that's L. So r is going to have to be L over 2 pi. So we could put in here L over 2 pi. All right, these twos cancel out. The other ones would have also. Um, B is 2 pi mu zero v over rl 2 pi mu zero v over rl um mu zero is 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7th Tesla meters over amps. Okay, so let's put this into an equation. 2 pi mu zero or pi times 10 to the negative seventh power, V, which is nine volts, over RL. R, we wrote above, was 1,050 ohms. 1,050, um, L is two. So I got 2 pi mu zero
9, because it was 9 volts, right, over 1,050 times 2, over RL. R is 1,050, L is 2. All right, so that gave me 3.3 eighths, 8 times 10 to the negative 11th Tesla. So I'm wondering, though, what if we made two loops? So let's do this again. Um, B equals 2 mu zero, I over two R. Okay. But R now, let's write R new because it's for, for two of them. We'd have to go two times around. So circumference is going to be, we have to go around twice. So it's going to be 4 pi r, which is L. So the new radius is going to be L over 4 pi. So this is if we do two loops. 2 mu 0 i over 2 l over 4 pi. 4 pi mu 0 t 4 pi mu 0 t over l. And last time we had two pi mu zero V over RL. Wait a minute. Okay, I'm not sure where this T came from. So let's get back here. B equals two mu zero I over two R nu. R nu is L over four pi. So 2 mu 0, oh, that's supposed to be an I. And I was 2V over R. So let me erase down here. Okay. two mu zero I, two mu zero I, which is two V over R, over two L over four pi. Okay. So that's going to give me eight pi. mu zero V over RL. Eight pi mu zero V over RL. Interesting. So when I made two loops out of the same length of wire versus one loop, And notice that I have the L over 4 pi over here. I got four times as much um, magnetic field. I want to make sure I didn't make a mistake here. The circumference of going around twice, 4 pi r, is going to be the length. So the length is going to be... Right. Okay. 
So if I make two loops, I could get this, which is four times as much. So I'm just going to multiply by what, what I had before times four, and that's going to give me um, 1.35 times 10 to the negative 7 Tesla. I mean, T. So I'm thinking that it really depends how many coils I can make with two meters of wire. And that really has to depend upon the wire. As a matter of fact, um, I am finding that the length of the wire, which is two meters, is two pi r times the number of coils that I make. So r is L over two pi N. And we also know that I is two V over R when we put them in parallel. And so B is N mu zero I over n mu zero i over 2r to r and r is l over 2 pi n so if i rearrange this then i get 2 pi n squared mu zero over l r we know that L is two, so this, this is a constant. We know that, we know R, it's 1050, that's a constant. That's a constant, that's uh, the um, magnetic permeability. And so it depends entirely upon the number of loops that I can reasonably make with two meters of wire. And I don't know how to answer that question. It, it depends upon the diameter of the wire and the, the tools that you have and um, how well you can bend, bend it. Um, so my answer would be that it depends on the number of loops I can make. So I would make the most loops possible with the tiniest little bends. So let's say that, for example, I could make a loop out of half a centimeter. So that would be point zero zero five meters that seems like that would be tight a loop out of a half a centimeter so if i take my length which is two meters and i divide by the point zero zero five that would give me the number of loops Two divided by, let's say that I could make 400 loops. Then I would put in a 400 for n here. So let me put that into my calculator. Two pi four hundred squared. over L R. Wait a minute. 
Yeah, R was 1050, L is 2. Okay, that would give me a B of 6 times 10 to the negative 4 Tesla. All right, so again, it depends on the number of loops and on wiring in series.